Okay, this image shows a Geiger Muller counter, sometimes known as a GM counter or a GM tube. It measures the amount of ionizing radiation emitted from a radioactive sample. This image shows the inside of a GM tube. You've got gas atoms inside it and the walls are charged negative and then you've got a rod in the middle which is positive. When ionizing radiation, for example, this gamma wave enters that, uh, the GM tube, it ionizes the atom. Okay, so the electrons go towards the positive and the positive ions go towards the negative. And this creates a pulse and the pulse is registered as one count and when more ionizing radiation comes in they can ionize more of the gas atoms creating more uh, registering more and more counts in any investigation before you use a gm tube to measure the radiation emitted by some source you have to actually remove the source from the room and measure the radiation inside the room without any radioactive substance in it you typically get around 180 counts measured over 10 minutes okay this is called the background radiation Okay, background radiation is a radiation that's always present in the environment. It's around 18 counts per minute, but this can vary from location to location. And also it can just vary randomly because background radiation just fluctuates due to randomness. The things that cause background radiation, for example, the air around us has radon in it, which is radioactive. So that emits some radiation. Medical uses such as x-rays, the ground and building around us, food, for example, has um, radioactive isotopes, cosmic rays and so on. In this other section, this is where all the nuclear weapons and nuclear power plants, the radiation emitted from those go in that. And as you can see, that's less than 1%. Okay, let's say I measure the background radiation for 10 minutes and I get 180 counts. That gives me a count, background count rate of 18 counts per minute. Now I'm ready to bring the sample back into the room. Okay, now let's say I measured that for around a minute and I got 70 counts. So that gives me an uncorrected count rate of 70 counts per minute. Uncorrected because we haven't subtracted the background radiation from this. So this 70 counts per minute is due to the radioactive sample and the background. So the corrected count rate is what we're interested in. So we're going to have to subtract the background radiation from that. And that gives me 52 counts per minute. Okay, one of the limitations with the measuring radioactivity is if the sample has a very low activity. So meaning that it does not emit much radiation to begin with. So this old rock here is getting a count rate of 20 counts per minute, but that's the uncorrected count rate. So let's say I subtract the background radiation around 18 and I get a count rate of 2 counts per minute. But the background radiation can change. So let's say another point uh, of the day, we're getting 17 for the background radiation. As you can see, there's a big percentage difference from 2 to three that's around 50 percent different and the back the radiation emitted from the sample itself can vary randomly so let's say a, a, another reading i take and i get 19 again once again a difference of 50 percent there so the only way to reduce this random error is to measure the radioactivity over a longer period of time and then average it out okay another limitation is with the gm tube itself if i bring the sample very close to the a GM tube, the count rate can, can't actually go higher than 5,000 counts per second. This is because um, there's something called a dead time where the particles inside have all been ionized and it takes some time to become unionized so they can detect more ionizing radiation. So because of this, the maximum count rate is limited to 5,000 counts per second, typically for a GM tube.